Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them, you can also... Oh, what? I forgot my next line. <laughs> oh, man, this is embarrassing. <laughs> OK, I really think we need to freshen things up. Producer Gareth, hit the voiceover button. Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. This episode of the Plant-Based Podcast is brought to you by our friends at Cobra. The Cobra range of garden machinery is constantly expanding and offers the UK's largest range of lawnmowers. With a comprehensive lineup of quality and innovative petrol, electric, battery, and cordless products to tackle any gardening task, Cobra is the newest evolution in garden machinery. Visit cobragarden.co.uk for your chance to win a variety of great Cobra products. So today we are at an award-winning garden centre who celebrated award wins at the National Garden Centre Conference for plant area, catering, indoor plant area and customer service. Also third in the top 100 league table and the criteria for that includes customer service, merchandising, creativity, innovation, quality and range. So this is quite some garden centre we are at, so we're going to find out more about the secret to Periwood success as we speak to Alan Bourne here today on the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. That's a big intro, isn't it? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You said it all. (laughs) Do we need to say any more? We'll stop the podcast now. (laughs) So... Just to begin with, Alan, can you tell us about the history of Periwood? Like the story, where was it, how was it all set up? And So briefly, the, uh, my father bought uh, Periwood in 1955. Mm-hmm. It was a four-acre small holding uh, with my mum uh, when I was four. So I've lived alongside um, this small holding ever since. My wife says I've never actually ever moved house. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Oh, why um, would you? It's lovely here. <laughs> <laughs> so my father grew strawberries, potatoes. We had um, laying hens. And, and I was very much involved as a child um, with all those processes. At 16, um, I left school. And I went to work in the culture parts department. Um, I, I wasn't so much interested in the, in the outdoor uh, crops. So I decided I'd like to do something with the nursery, mm-hmm. some greenhouses. And I think that stems from seeing Grand father's greenhouse and getting the smell of that sort of air mm. of those glass houses yeah. and the parts department was in Colchester at the time when councils were still spending money and they gave me a th- an apprenticeship they sent me to ritual for three days a week um, sorry one day a week for three years and uh, that was very good grounding giving yeah. me some um, it's a good, great college mm, so. good nuts and bolts for the job yeah and he did a lot of our staff um, have come from Riddle in the yeah. past, right. although not so many now. Um, after three years, I got fed up being told what to do, and uh, like my father and my <laughs> grandfather, just like Helen. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandfather before me all worked, um, had their own businesses. My grandfather mm-hmm. grew seed right. um, locally, and I persuaded my father to build some greenhouses. So we found some tatty old greenhouses and. Took them down, built them. So we became carpenters, bricklayers, electricians, plumbers. <laughs> and in those glass houses, we grew tomatoes, radish, lettuce, mm-hmm. with a few house plants and bedding plants as well. 
Oh, all the smells. Yeah. Mm. So the, um, the Spanish then covered their whole country with plastic and the price of tomatoes, etc., really uh -huh. was not worth growing them. So we intensified the bedding plants and the house plants mm. um, during that period. Mm -hmm. And it worked very well. What type of house plants was it then? Though? Yeah, it's pretty it's, basic it's stuff. Trend, wasn't it? Yeah, um, flowering mostly. So okay. cyclamen, primulas, yeah. um, cinereras that are now called Calcellaria. cinetis, calcellarias. Calcellosias. Oh, oh. <laughs> the ones I remember from my childhood, you see, with my grandparents. Yeah. But most of the uh, green plants, we, we were importing on those from Holland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was mostly flowering plants that people are interested in. Oh, I bet it looked beautiful oh, yeah. as well. Skyzanthus as well. Did you have some? We had Skyzanthus. Oh, wow. Poor man's amazing. orchid. Oh, amazing. The poor man's poor, orchid. Poor man's orchid. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's so easy I don't to grow. Think nobody, nobody knows that anymore, do they? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and during those times, I think we got up to two staff. My sister was sort of um, um, managing or supervising the uh, growing side. Mm -hmm. um, so in 1984, my father decided to take early retirement and we swapped houses and I came here with my wife, Karin, with three young children, all under seven, and uh, no money. Mm -hmm. And from there, we started building um, more greenhouses. Uh, I think when we took it over, it was turning over £75,000 mm -hmm. and we can do that on a good day now. Ah, so it shows you how, awesome. how it's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Never actually dreamed it would get as large as it is now, to be quite honest. Wow. Um, and I've ne never really grown it for the money. Yeah. It's just that sheer satisfaction yeah. and the passion of just doing it and getting yeah. better and looking yeah. forward to the next year because you've made a mistake this yeah. year yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And with growing, you, only, you, you have to wait another year. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Just yeah. Yeah. Start manufacturing straight away. <laughs> um, I suppose the next big change, um, and all that time we were employing more and more staff. Uh, we were husband and wife team working together uh, as much as Cara could with the children. And we had the storms of 86. Mm. So the Michael Fish, there's not yeah. going to be a hurricane. Yeah. But yes, there was. There really was. And it wrecked a lot of our old greenhouses. Oh. But it actually did us good because it forced us to expand quicker. So we, we demolished and put new glass houses up. Okay. Much more modern. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry, are you just stanking Michael Fish there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. In a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm probably the only person that probably has. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think in 87 and again in 90, we had two more storms. Mm -hmm. um, the first year that my wife and I took over, we had so much snow and cold, we lost a lot of the crops. I'm really swore at my father for leaving that particular year and dropped me right into it but um, <laughs> come the following spring of course we had everybody had lost their geraniums so we did mm. extremely well so there another good thank you for the bad <laughs> um Karen did the sort of accounts mm -hmm. um we said we'd get, become accountants um I, I was doing most of the buying then of all the plants and we'd started um, buying uh, horticulture products, um, you know, the spades and forks, etc. Mm -hmm. And I think we're now on our fourth or fifth shop. Right. So every few years as the business grew, we had to rebuild another mm -hmm. shop. And all of our children became involved in those and certainly Hannah mm -hmm. um, was quite often seen on the tills from, oh, wow. from an age of yeah. probably six or seven, you know, going outside <laughs> and selling a cucumber or something. Uh -huh. um, so the next big thing for us was the year uh, 2000, we built the coffee shop. Um, we needed um, staff facilities, we needed toilets, so we set about this project. And it was the biggest project that um, we'd had for a long time. And it started off slowly with 60 covers, um, but we, every, after every two years we outgrew it. And we went to 100 to 160, now we're 240 covers. Yeah, wow. that's so, that's big. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, I think you have a, a little fact about scones, don't you? We do. On um, the last count, um, it was up to about 84,000 scones. That's a <laughs> lot of scones, scones, scones. 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 84,000. That's a lot of hungry and we, gardeners. We, <laughs> we sell many more cups of coffee than tea, so we're no longer in the notion of tea drinkers, but I think that's a known fact. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> But more point with the scone, where, where was the jam? Under the cream or uh, above the cream? Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, I think we can argue that one for... Um, cream on 
top. Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. Jam then cream. No, cream underneath. But how can you put jam. jam on top of cream? It doesn't spread. You uh, spread the jam and you blob the cream. It really Cloth yeah. cream is quite firm. Yeah, no. Uh, no, no, no. You've no. got to push it in a bit. Anyway. I'm jam on first. Uh, can I just ask about the cafe? So why, why did you choose to open the cafe as an extra kind of element to the garden centre? Because... I know this garden centre fairly well. I've been coming for many years. And it's, your plant area, everything is very strong and the cafe is strong. Whereas some garden centres have a cafe in order to bring in visitors. But I don't think you had that problem. We thought... This it was just an addition to what you already had, wasn't You're it? quite right. We've, yeah. we, I think we fought it for a long time. Our customers were putting demands in, you know, why don't you have a coffee shop? Because mm. a lot of our competitors were already doing it. Mm. And we felt that we were strong enough with our plants, whereas a lot of other yeah. centres weren't, mm -hmm. that we could... <laughs> you know, get get through the the heavy tide, um, but because we needed more facilities, mm -hmm. those facilities were actually quite expensive. Yeah. So we thought we need to make it turn it into a profit. Okay. So that's how it became, um, purely because we needed extra facilities. Mm -hmm. And we haven't looked back since. We've um, been able to employ some extremely good managers and extremely good staff. Um, the scone recipe, for instance, came from mm -hmm. one of those managers, mm -hmm. and uh, it's carried on through. Yeah. From strengths yeah. to strengths, we have a fantastic team in there at the moment. The, the chefs, the, the food, they, yeah. I call it churning out. It's, it, if you yeah. go in there sometimes, you see racks and racks of really? um, all the food ready, uh -huh. prepped up, quiches. Uh -huh. yeah. You would not believe it. Have you ever opened in the evening? Or no, it was about? said when we first opened it, we had so many requests for parties and weddings because mm. in those days there weren't as many wedding venues as there are now. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd love to get married in a garden centre. Yeah. Well, That'd be really cool. <laughs> so there are garden centres that do that. Wow. But because I live on site, we close at five and with, with a young family, yeah. enough's yeah. enough, you know, yeah, sure. seven days a week. Uh, yeah. and, and I was, I have worked a lot of seven day weeks and 10 hour days. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. You've got to get the balance. Yeah, definitely. Mm. <laughs> but I think we're extremely fortunate the business we've built up it's been so diverse that you feel you could do anything sometimes oh, that's brilliant um, oh. and how many staff work here now? so yeah. I don't know the exact count because we've, we've, uh, since Covid things have changed a little bit <clears throat> although we appear to still be advertising for staff strangely enough mm -hmm. um, it's around about 200 okay. wow. and then in Sudbury it's about 40 Wow, so wow. 200 on this site? Wow. That's so many. Well, a lot of them, because we're open seven days, are um, part-time. Mm -hmm. So we have weekend cover yeah. students yeah. for the tills and mm -hmm. a coffee shop. Nice. So we do allow our staff to take, you know, two days a week off now. Mm -hmm. um, not that long ago, it, in the early 2000s, most of our staff was doing uh, six-day weeks. Wow. Yeah. wow. When we came in, we said, mm -hmm. wow, isn't, this seems like a really nice place to work. Yeah, everyone the staff all seems so happy. Everyone was so friendly and, and happy yeah. and we, like chatting. We have a fantastic team here and they've been here 20 years plus, some of them. Yeah. yeah. And they're still quite young. So that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. that. So we, we've, we think we've probably got quite a young team. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I know we have. And um, that seems to work very well. Mm -hmm. you know, they have energy, mm. um, ideas, mm -hmm. and... Uh, it, it makes it work really well. Awesome. And I feel like they're great ambassadors for the company outside of the company. Because I came to know Perrywood through um, Zoe and her houseplant yes. account on Instagram. Well, yes, with the... And Arif as well, what he does on Instagram. Yes, on Instagram has yeah. been phenomenal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in the early stages, setting this business up, it was hard work because what did you got? Yellow pages. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And now yeah. you just Google it yeah, and that's right. you have the information you need. Yeah, it's all there. Um, you actually just mentioned Sudbury, and you, that, you've recently just opened a new place in Sudbury. That's two you? years, yes. Two years, okay. So, was is this just for expansion? Did did you we, see a need in that area? How did this come about? Well, I have three three children, all of who are in the business. And yeah. um, Simon joined us in two thousand and ten, and Hannah and Tristan followed since. Yeah. Hannah looks after the promotional yeah. side, and Tristan does sort of. Um, projects and that sort of thing. Um, we've been looking for a little while for another centre because we've outgrown everything here. Everything has become stretched, whether it be toilets, car park, mm -hmm. and without a massive building pro programme. So we thought maybe it's better to look for somewhere else mm -hmm. that could complement it. Because sometimes big is not always best. Yeah. 
And then the Y Vale garden tent has become on the market and unbeknown to me, Simon took himself off and visited several garden centres and came back and said, Dad, we're going to bid for three garden centres. Uh, my wife went a little bit crazy for a few <laughs> minutes. Uh, um, and we were lucky enough to actually secure one of them, which was the largest site they had on their books, which is Sudbury, which is 35 acres. Mm -hmm. It had most hits in the, in the marketing because it had the most, it was the largest. Mm. But in actual fact, it was quite a poorly run garden centre, mm -hmm. turning over um, just under a million pounds. Right. Um, but the infrastructure was there, mm. uh, a good bunch of staff, uh, just needed a little bit more guidance. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, in, in those period, we've managed to get the turnover just under two million. Wow, in just two years? You which we, it, it, yeah, it, massive. we got it up to 1.6 in the first year. But it should have done better this year, but obviously we've been closed for two months mm. during the, yeah. the yeah. busy period. Yeah. But it's been doing upwards of um, four times what it did for the same period as yeah, last year. Yeah, that's incredible. Oh. And is it mainly houseplants, or is there a big focus mm. on houseplants there? There is a focus on houseplants. The first thing you see when you come in the door, mm. um, because of the extra hype of houseplants and trend at the moment, um, we, we found that to be quite important. And, uh, but the rest of it is just as important for us. Right. It's in quite a rural area, so people have got big gardens. Yeah. And it's so surprising how we can sell different things there, like larger plants, they can sell extremely well. Oh, right, okay. And I think it reflects on, say, the size oh, of those oh. gardens. Right. Yeah, can we go there today? Can we go there today? <laughs> <laughs> I've really wanted to go. I've been trying to visit there for like Well, well I can now, welcome you there as well. I'm going there at 12 o'clock because we inherited a couple of old greenhouses and we're desperate to get one of them repaired. So yeah. I'm, I'm, meeting somebody there to look uh -huh. at that today. I've got a friend who lives just literally, you know, a few yards away and used to walk across the field and work there in his college years as well. So I'd been in that garden centre quite a few times, but yeah, it didn't used to be that sparkly. Well, we have two staff there who, who worked there originally when it was a nursery before it was an mm -hmm. actual garden centre. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, because, yeah, they used sorry, to be like a wholesale part to the right hand side yes. as well. So you've now got that whole site. The there. whole site. Okay. Yeah, Chilton Plants. So one of our staff mm -hmm. there, he's been with us on that site for 40 years. Wow. Oh gosh. <laughs> and hopefully he's happy with the changes. He yeah. seems very happy. Yeah, that's good. Very yeah. good. Uh, before we move on to, we're going to talk about lockdown for a little bit because we need to. Um, I just want to ask you a little bit more about how you buy the plants and do you propagate anything on your sites and what percentage do you propagate and where you do buy, do you buy from UK or Holland kind of, how does all of that work for you and how many buyers do you work with? So the, the nursery, <coughs> that's where it started, has always been a, a, a strong mm -hmm. thing for us and a lot of garden centres are very envious. Over the last few years a lot of garden centres have tried to emulate what we do mm. and um, if, they, if they've got facilities on their site to grow. Yeah. It is extremely different to running a garden centre, yeah. it's a different um, mindset, um, but it works in terms that y y we know what crops we've got, we know when they're going to be ready, we know when the next batches are there, mm -hmm. so when customers, mm -hmm. whereas when we rely on suppliers, they might not have anything. Mm -hmm. And certainly during this COVID period, that has been the case. Yeah. A lot of garden centres have struggled to get, mm -hmm. um, certainly vegetable plants, which have been, you know, 200% extra mm -hmm. in sales, um, but just haven't been there. And it must be overall more cost effective to grow your own stuff um, as well? Not necessarily, no. not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we, we do have large, we don't have transport mm -hmm. on those products, but um, you have to get it right. And if you're mm -hmm. buying in, you probably only buy what you need, was with the tendency when you grow is to possibly to overgrow. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but so we you're have much a more in control, which is a cost so saving in, in itself. You're in control it? in one sense, but yeah. slightly out of control the other way. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I still think on balance that it's better too. Right. So hence the Sudbury, where that comes in, because it's got a big site, the facilities to put a nursery there mm -hmm. attracted. And, and my family are very much wanted to keep that history going. Mm -hmm. we, we obviously do buy a lot of um, plants, but we, we mainly grow bedding plants and, and some house plants. Same sort of house plants we grew, believe it or not, when we first started, things like sickle mm -hmm. and primulis. Yeah. <laughs> some of the cooler, um, shouldn't say this to the staff, but the easier crops. Yeah. Um, whereas most of the house plants we sell all come from Holland. 
Mm -hmm. Apart from probably Streptocarpus, which are grown in Wales. Oh, yeah. But probably the only place in the world that grows Streptocarpus. Probably the only place in the world, nearly. That's amazing. <laughs> ah. So. We do try to buy all the shrubs and the perennials. If we can buy British, we do. Mm -hmm. But the Dutch are so good at their game yeah. that they have always got the right product at the right price. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of English growers are getting better and better, and we have some superb English growers out there mm -hmm. now. Yeah, and it's good to hear. Superb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you've touched on lockdown a little, um, but you know, it, especially earlier on in the year. It, it had a huge effect on garden centres and horticulture industry in general. When lockdown hit, how did you react to what was happening? How did, how did you react to like the change? We reacted quickly, but probably too quickly. Mm -hmm. On the day we closed, we literally furloughed all the staff, apart from, I think, 14 on the two sites, mainly to look after the plants. Mm -hmm. We had, because we were fully stocked, ready for the spring period. Mm -hmm. Really fully stocked. Gosh. Um, on the nursery side, with the staff, that were, there was a team or two left there. Um, I worked closely with them because I, you spoke about buying, I do most of the plant buying. I now have a, um, an assistant and we, I work closely with the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. So with the nursery manager, we looked at all the crops, which we didn't know when we were going to reopen. So we, we looked at being closed for a month, being closed mm -hmm. for two months, three months. So we started to throw away things which were going to spoil within mm -hmm. those early stages. Yeah. We literally loaded trolleys and took them away. Mm -hmm. Because we've got a fairly small nursery here and to be able to carry on the production, you have to sell things. So it's yeah. like a factory, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. one out, one in. Mm -hmm. But nothing was going out. So if we didn't throw things <coughs> out, we couldn't produce the next crops. Mm -hmm. So that was a challenge. I felt as though I was um, playing God's Abbot like, mm. every minute of the yeah, day. It's sort of heartbreaking as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good at letting yeah. things go over my yeah. head. And, um, but um, we were making decisions every day. Mm. <coughs> and certainly for the first three weeks, I enjoyed doing my own garden but just giving instructions to some of the staff. Mm. But after that, I realised we hadn't got enough staff and I was spending three days of work, a week working on the nursery, trying to help these guys. Once we got more and more news as to the fact we may be coming, that we were able to open, the government and the horticultural bodies, we lobbied the government to get us open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that worked extremely well. Yeah. And uh, we opened a lot quicker than we thought but we weren't really ready for it. <laughs> we, we didn't have enough stock because when the gates opened, we were inundated. Wow. What date did you reopen them? I think it was a... Tw uh, no, you're asking me a question. Uh, it was in yeah. July. Yeah. Was it? What? Was it? Or was it earlier than that? Can't remember. Yeah, Not no, sure. I think much earlier in July, was it? I think. Yeah, when things reopened. I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> Gosh, time flies, doesn't it? But early July. Early July, yeah. yeah. So, um... In hindsight, what would you have done differently? Do well, hindsight, we'd have probably had left more staff available. <laughs> um, I mean, we did, um, before we were allowed to open, we did a, we were supplying locally. Mm -hmm. We had four vans on the road mm -hmm. and customers were emailing their orders in right. and we were picking. Almost like a sort of local mail order yeah. service. Then, we probably should have started that earlier. A lot yeah. of our competitors who were a lot smaller mm -hmm. and who didn't have much staff, but yeah. possibly just use their family, yeah. and they could control it. But trying to control the amount of customers that custom base that we have yeah. was pretty difficult. Um, but we should have started earlier. And um, once we could see the trend the, and the demand for people, we cranked up the nursery. We'd already literally stopped sowing seed. At one point, we cancelled all our young plants, which we buy in from specialist mm -hmm. um, propagators up to a certain date. But looking back, we yeah. cancelled too many. Yeah. But the hindsight is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Can never because tell. it was so unknown. No yeah. one would have known what was going to happen next. So But the staff know. were so pleased to, to come back. Yeah. Mm. Um, yes, there was intrepidation, they were frightened, they didn't know what yeah. to expect. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of their absences we completely changed and ripped the whole place apart to get mm. wider pathways. Um, we'd streamlined the whole range, 
and it was all different and mm. um, quite a shock for them. <laughs> yeah. And it feels, to be quite honest, as though we've literally opened another business. Yeah. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting yeah. from scratch again. Mm. Mm. Yes, the plants are the same, you can grow the same way, but yeah. controlling it. It's very different. Very different. Mm. But do you, you say streamlined, so do you mean that your range is a little bit smaller at the moment? Or? It certainly um, was, yes, because, yeah. because the when you sow seeds, it can take mm. anywhere between four to ten weeks before it's ready. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of, the, as I said earlier, a lot of the young plants we'd cancelled. So, mm. it, it just wasn't available. Yeah. Young mm. material wasn't available to grow. So it was a natural culling. Mm. As regards the rest of the business, um, a lot of the dry products, the fertilisers, etc. Once we sold what was on the shelves, mm -hmm. because all the other got, companies got caught with their pants down as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. yeah. Plastic <laughs> bottles, for instance, were all going to to have been used to fill for sanitation uh, liquid. Mm. So there are no plastic bottles to put mm. tomato food in, for instance. Mm. So the, the the production lines of all those was slow. Yeah, completely changed. <laughs> would Everyone's you say? Uh, sorry, would you say now you're back to normal in terms of plant stock? Then you kind of you caught up. Plant stock is vir is virtually back to normal. Yeah. But at one time I felt a, a bit like a stockbroker. I was actually. Uh, working seven days a week until 10 o'clock on Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. a lot, when the list came from either Holland or, or the English growers, if you didn't order when it came in, mm -hmm. the stuff had gone. Yeah. And, uh, but we are just about back there now. But there again, we still suffer from shortage of supplies because growers, where you're growing shrubs, etc., which takes several months lead time, there will be a shortage mm -hmm. moving into next yeah. spring. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, kind of COVID and lockdown aside, how do you feel that gun centres have changed generally over the last, say, 20 years? What changes have you seen? In 20 years, um, from the time we started our coffee shop, it was the coffee shops everywhere have become a very big player. Mm -hmm. um, and the quality about, has improved at the same time. Yes, and coffee shops about 20% of our turnover. Mm -hmm. Some garden centres, it can be up to as high as 50%. Mm. Yeah. We're now diversified into many more products. Mm -hmm. Um, to keep the cash flow going all year. So we're heavily into Christmas, and that's been a big game changer for garden, most garden centres. We're stocking clothing. Yeah. Um, but we as a company have kept our feet right on the ground and still carried on um, and very strong on the plant side, mm. hence the awards, and hopefully we can carry that through. And I think that the COVID showed that demand for plants, what you do with them, what you can do and the time you spend at home mm -hmm. has been very important. Yeah. The um, demographics of that has changed as well in terms of our elderly customers. They look younger, they are younger. <laughs> and mm -hmm. there's a lot of young couples now with brand new homes with children, we see them coming in. Mm -hmm. And houseplants now, we've got teenagers buying houseplants. Yeah, it's ace, isn't it? <laughs> it's everything we dreamt of when yeah, we were kids, because we were the odd kids buying the houseplants, but now it's normal. First it's notice that when, when Zoe, who you mentioned earlier, yeah. came in, she said, my sister's going to university, I've come with some plants. And I went, so you're taking plants to university? I thought most people drunk beer and had a good time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a wake-up call in the houseplants, but I mean, talking about houseplants, we've always been very strong because my background with the parks department, with the yeah, ornamentals, yeah. you know, we used to decorate mayor's parlours and all sorts. And even during recessions, which we've had several since we've been in business, we've always kept our houseplant division. Yeah. Most garden centres are still trying to catch up because they've completely given up on houseplants yeah. up until two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're still very strong on those houseplants. And, uh, yeah, might continue. Oh, I love yeah. it, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yes, a young audience now, and, and, and people are bringing their toddler children along, and we do workshops yeah. and, and with the children, etc. and they're fully booked. Um, obviously, none of those happening at the moment this year, which is quite disappointing for the team. Mm. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's interesting, isn't it, how things change, and obviously, in more recent years, there's a, um, a huge demand for mail order plants as well. And as you mentioned about the um, your cafe, it's part of the experience, isn't it, of coming out to shop rather than ordering online. And, you know, has garden centre shopping changed because mail order has increased or is there room for both of those? I mean, how do you see that? There's definitely room for both. When some of the big superstores started selling plants, 
the whole industry was quite worried. Mm. And, um, but we, we turned that around as a positive because people coming into some of those stores and buying plants, possibly cheap, but maybe the quality wasn't there. It may be they only look good on day one, don't yes, they? Well, so. But it maybe introduced themselves to gardening and then they move on to somewhere a bit nicer mm -hmm. to come to. Um, yes, if we'd have had an online service during the COVID period, that could have helped us. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of online companies in plants now, but I think it's only been the last two years when they've actually made any money from it. Mm -hmm. It's quite difficult to get into and have the plants ready at the time people expect mm -hmm. them. Okay. Well, in part two, we're going to talk a little bit more about the customer, kind of different customers you've seen in here, but also delve into your plant range a little bit. I want to hear about a few of the more rare and unusual plants that you, you favour here and... Maybe, um, have you had any celebrity customers? Have a little think about that. Apart we'll from you. In, in part two. Apart from you, Michael. <laughs> Not a celebrity. Go away. <laughs> So next we have Forage and Folklore coming up. Now these are fantastic guys and their knowledge of wildflowers and any wild crop is just phenomenal. So it's not just the uses, but it's also the folklore and the stories behind them. So let's see what they're talking about this month. Hey there, it's uh, Tom here from Forage and Folklore Tours. I'm your nature guide and my partner Ashley is your guide on all the traditions and folklore that surround the flora and fauna we come across on all the walks that we bring our guests out on. Uh, today we decided to discuss a plant with you folks that we particularly like to harvest around this time of year, which is the cleaver. Cleavers go by a whole bunch of different names, but the one that most everybody knows them by is called sticky weed. And I'm sure we all have uh, thrown them at one another as kids, or even maybe we still do because um, cleavers are covered in hooked bristles and they end up sticking to your clothes and they're quite often difficult to get off. Um, they are super abundant and you can find cleavers just about everywhere, all across the countryside or even in town, wherever there's really green spaces to be found. Uh, Ashley and I particularly want to talk about cleavers today because we associate them uh, with the coming of spring and the Celtic festival in bulk, which typically takes place around the start of February and is traditionally around the time when uh, ewes begin to lamb and new life starts to emerge in nature, such as all the snowdrops that I'm sure you've seen popped up just about everywhere. Uh, this is a time of cleansing and purification when the body, mind, and the home are cleansed of cobwebs, dust, and any stagnant or stuck energies that's left over from the winter. So really, it's, a spe it's essentially um, spring cleaning. So to us, cleavers are really an excellent embodiment of um, the celebration of in bulk and this time of year uh, as foragers, we use cleavers for their cleansing properties. So when cleavers are made into a tea or an infusion or even a tincture, uh, they help clear out the lymphatic system, reduce swelling in the lymph nodes, and they're also diuretic, which further helps rid the body of toxins. Um, it's a great and refreshing um, drink to make to help kickstart your body and really get you out of that sort of sense of hibernation that we all tend to feel during the winter months that sometimes comes into that start of spring as well. Ashley and I particularly like to use cleavers um, in a tea that we also use nettles with, and it makes for a delicious tea and something we find particularly uh, refreshing and, um, and cleansing. So it's a really great time of year, like I said, to go out looking for cleavers because they're going to be nice and young, which is ideal for tea making. And they're going to be growing in abundance, as I said, so you really shouldn't be impacting the environment all that much if you're harvesting um, consciously. And as we prepare for spring um, and the start of the warm weather to come, it's a good time to cleanse our houses and our physical spaces, but it's also a good time to focus on cleansing our body and detoxifying ourselves, um, getting rid of any real heaviness that's left over from the winter. Cleavers are, cleavers are easy to identify, and uh, they're a great first plant of the year to go out and start foraging, especially as a way to connect to the land, the spirit of the season, and celebrations of old. Okay, so we're back here with Alan at Perrywood Garden Centre, which has won a string of awards. But we want to ask Alan, where do you get your inspiration 
behind how Perrywood has run and where new ideas come from? Because from what I see, the, the nursery and garden centre here is always developing. It always looks fresh, new, tidy, easy to navigate. Where do you get that inspiration from? I think the inspiration for it in the early days was a, a, a passion for growing. So we were very keen to keep trying anything and everything. And from then on, I think the is trends and customer led. You know, you get to listen to them. Um, you look at your competitors, you look at the media. And as I said earlier on, we only had yellow pages. Now we've got Google and everything mm -hmm. is at your fingertips. So it's, it appears to be a lot easier now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it is that passion and drive mm. that really does um, in, in encourage the, the success and what we're actually doing here. Do you ever follow customers around and kind of monitor what they're saying about stuff? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you can't admit that. <laughs> My wife insisted several years ago that I don't wear a staff uniform. She, she was yeah. fed up with seeing me seven days a week in a party with a T-shirt. <laughs> um, she thinks the one I'm wearing at the moment is a bit like a uniform. But yeah. um, we, so I go around incognito now. Yeah. yeah. And um, I do listen. I think it helps me in my buying um, tasks to see what people are putting into their baskets. Yeah. I watch Definitely. the way they flow around the centre yeah. and where they're heading to. And um, that gives you a, a lot of ideas and inspiration. That's really cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. And we also, that's our plant area team are always throwing ideas at me as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So how, how would you choose new products then? Or do you, would you ever go to different nurseries in Holland or you would see them in books or online? Or Every year, new a, in the early stages, nothing was really available. Mm. We had to travel the whole country to find product. It was very difficult. So that's hence why we used to grow a lot of our, a lot of it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I had been known to take the odd cutting from somebody else's garden mm -hmm. to propagate and build up the stocks. And we used to, <laughs> I won't say where. I love that. And uh, do you, when you were saying about walking around a garden centre and uh, it's good to see what people are putting in their baskets and stuff, do you notice new gardeners come into the garden centre? <laughs> like, do you can you tell a new gardener? <clears throat> Like, what, you know, when you're walking around and seeing someone's basket, <laughs> can you tell who is new to gardening? And if you are a new gardener and you were walk into here, what, what do you recommend a beginner gardener does? Like, where do they start? Well, I think generally you could probably tell a new gardener, especially um, if he's mild, because the first thing is, is on his mobile phone, Back to the wife, ask him whether he's made the right decision. Yeah. Um, we do have um, sections out there, right plant, right place. So for clay mm -hmm. soil, we're only 20 minutes from the coast here, so mm -hmm. yeah. um, we have coastal plants. Yeah. Um, and then we have other plants that we've got that we use here. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 Dry, shade. Don't always see those areas in garden centres, no. but I think yeah. it really helps a beginner navigate. And so, also, I do think that. And like lots of beginner gardeners don't know at that point how important the soil type is to the plant. Mm. And so actually by saying, you know, these are good for clay, these mm. are good for sand, that's that, that will bring their attention to the fact, oh, I need to think about the soil as well. Because, mm. you know, that's where a lot of plants fail because you didn't yeah. understand the soil in the first place. It is. And believe it or not, we, we love our customers to get good results. There's a bit of a myth that, well, yes, you want to die, you want the frost to kill them off. Yeah. People can get demoralised. And yeah. uh, so we and they do... Blame they, no, well, they, so. Majority, they blame themselves. They blame the majority, they blame themselves. But um, just dropping back to your previous question there, um, mm -hmm. where I, I think I lost the thread a bit, the, um, the new plants, we, all, we always visit trade shows in this country and also overseas. Mm. And most uh, progressive companies will have a show and then the first thing they will do is to put up there, show you their new plants. The mm. biggest frustration is when they go and put them on television and not available till two years time. Mm -hmm. Or maybe one of the mail order companies brought the rights to all of them mm. and they're only available as mail order. So that's mm. frustrating for us. Mm. Um, so by the time we get them, they're a bit old hat. Mm. Yeah. So then, then we have to re-promote them again, you know, yeah. Chelsea 1990 winner sort of thing. Yeah. And a beginner garden might be after the yeah. star plant from Chelsea <laughs> that year. You might have seen Definitely. it on TV. And, and I know from, that one. Yeah, from my experience um, at Thompson Morgan for 20 years, you know, we 
We tried everything we could. The moment the Chelsea Flower Show plant was announced, we would ring all the suppliers to buy all the stock. You know, so I apologise, Alan, <laughs> for that. Well, what was the one with the tomato and the potato? So you, you oh, that tomato. was the tomato. Egg, yeah, no, yeah, tomato. Tomato. So ketchup and fries when it was sold in the US. But a lot of that stuff was kind of new stuff to get attention as well because yes. it's a novelty. But yes. novelties sell. Yes. And it gets people into gardening and especially something like that where everybody's like, wow, you know, that's, it's putting plants in front of people and a, a geranium or a fuchsia wouldn't give the same reaction. No, so not at all. I think things like that are always important to have. So I think it's good that we, we do have those mail order companies always like, they're searching out these products mm. and that's great. And although it'd be nice to get some of these new plants straight away, um, <laughs> we have Chelsea Flower Show and uh, mm. all these gardening programs. But I think programs. sometimes, if um, it's sometimes about having a relationship one stage back with the breeder, because if you know the breeders and you go into the kitchen, you can often select something, you know, before it reaches the trial stage. So that could be. But how would you know get that that's the, the hit? Like you know that well, you're kind of following your own instinct because you know what your customers yeah. potentially are looking for. A lot of the trade and shows. And that's how a lot of those transactions would have worked. They yes. would have been decided even yes. before trials. Yes. Yeah, sometimes. A lot of the trade shows we go to, they'll have a flag system and they invite you to put a flag on. Mm. Oh, yeah. the, the plant that appeals to you most or, yeah. the, or the Dutch do it a different way they have a bag and you put an orange or a yellow ball in <laughs> and then everyone else yes. sees what you chose them don't Absolutely. You? <laughs> that's very true yeah. that's very true <laughs> so we've walked around um, the, we've walked into a garden centre as a new customer you've given us all sorts of guidance with the right place to put somewhere the right plant to plant somewhere kind of all of that lovely know-how you've also got all the accessories that someone could ever need you've also got some really nice homeware as well I just want to touch on because later in the series we're going to talk to an independent garden centre as well and I just want to ask kind of like how would you advise anybody that did want to start growing their own plants on a small scale say if they were going to start a very small plant shop or a flower shop because what has been amazing in the last few years is seeing how house plant shops have popped up everywhere and I was saying to Ellen yesterday that there are there's about 10 in Norwich isn't there there's quite it's a just lot crazy. In Norwich, there's yeah. so many house plant shops and I think they could do one in Cambridge as well so I'm thinking of opening one not really <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, I, I, we don't know how long the houseplant trend, and it, mm. it would concern me um, just having my eggs in one basket. Mm. Yeah. So to start afresh, I think uh, you can have a lot of drive, a lot of passion, mm. and people always ask me when I do the talks on the history of Perry, it is total commitment mm -hmm. from family, from staff, and you don't need a lot of money to start with, but mm. it does help, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure you can start in a small way now as easy as we could when mm -hmm. wife and I started um, all those years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think if you start, you've got to maybe specialise a little bit more. Yeah. And indeed, there mm -hmm. are yeah. some very small growers who do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the good ones progress into large companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of those small companies would use an online system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I think yeah. it's like the passion and the drive and just loving plants and what you do and loving people as well because you have such a big team here. Mm -hmm. You know, without them, Perrywood wouldn't yeah. be what it is. So it's about the people as well, isn't it? Well, I think we've proved over the COVID period that we've been very entrepreneurial and we, we've just opened another cafe, we mm -hmm. called the Greenhouse Cafe, on this site because mm -hmm. we could only have 140 yeah. covers in the out. coffee shop. So we, we put another 40 covers in the greenhouse and we've been talking about it for five years but never done it. Mm. So it's I just think COVID accelerated a lot of stuff in really yeah. positive ways. Yeah. It's just, it's given excuses to make things happen, yeah. you know, yeah. for good and bad reasons, but still we've made change happen, which yes. is something that as humans we're always so slow to do. And yeah. Yeah. Another change is we, we're, ca uh, we're card only, no cash. We'd really mm -hmm. love to see that one. <laughs> what, what did yeah. the like the older demographic how did they react to it though because well, it would worry me because they might still think, live their lives in a very traditional absolutely. way absolutely somebody said the other day it's um it's the king's it's the king's um coins mm -hmm. king's money so we should be doing it <laughs> um i think in the early stages uh the the, uh, the older customers weren't coming out yeah so by the time they did come out they knew everywhere, they'd been used to the odd food shops where it was card only. Okay. Um, but yes, um, we're still getting a few, 
um, but we're sticking to our guns at the moment mm -hmm. and we're hoping um, in the future it may come back but in a, a more reduced way like mm -hmm. so not every till would possibly have cash yeah, in. yeah maybe one cash till you know like yeah. you have at the what is it when you go for a toll on a motorway you know, uh, yes. yeah, one is cash and the rest is card. Maybe that way. Yeah. Mm. Um, something else I noticed definitely during lockdown is, you know, obviously people's desire to be more connected with the natural world. But for many people, that was house plants, and we've obviously discussed that a lot. But I noticed, especially on social media, how many more people were were seeking rare, unusual, and different plants because there were so many more photographs of kind of like different stuff out there. So do you have, like, do you sell rare plants here, kind of more unusual stuff? Yes, we have to sell what is rare and unusual. Um, I usually put that, it's a bit like saying a weed is only weed because it's in the wrong place in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So rare and unusual, we've always, me as a buyer with a passion for plants, has always sought out rare and unusual plants. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, a lot of those are not grown in a commercial way, right. mm -hmm. and you see on the, in the media, so many people have now got these sort of tropical gardens, and with mm -hmm. the mild winters we've been having, they've been working really well. Indeed, my son Simon, he loves green plants, he loves things with big leaves, mm -hmm. right. you know, which to the older person, it's, <laughs> that's, that's a tree, you know. <laughs> so, um, yes, we have seen um, the plants which we hadn't sold a lot of before. Mm -hmm. right. Um, citrus, for instance. Right. Yeah. Citrus plants, the sales have always been good here, mm -hmm. but they've actually gone through the roof. Yeah. Wow. A bit, you found out of all edibles, I guess. Yes, yeah. um, the grow your own, um, you know, people are, not everybody is successful with a packet of seed, mm. but mm. Um, we, we have sold many more vegetable plants um, this mm. year than before. Yeah, that's a question I'd like to ask actually. Where does seed fit into it all now? Because you know, obviously, in terms of mail order, you know, seeds started to tail off when young plant development was happening. Like, do people still buy seeds? Like, and what demographic is that? I would say up until the year 2000, percentages in, compared with the sales we do was mm -hmm. extremely high. Mm -hmm. And it's been dropping down until around about five, six years ago when it stabilised. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly this year, our seed racks have been emptied. Mm. No. Because people have got the time. Yeah, you know, time. Today. People are hungry for it this year, though. So they? much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how fortunate to have April, May, June, July, and mm. now August with so much sun. Mm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. in many respects, it's been a lot easier to grow product. You don't citrus, you know, you, yeah. you're going to get good results. Things like cannons, which probably don't even flower in a normal summer. Mm -hmm. You know, they're now six foot high and flowering mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. this. Summer has been fantastic mm -hmm. for people that are only just starting to get results. They're at home every day to water them, yeah. mm -hmm. so they're getting fantastic results. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. been amazing to see how many people. I think got the good out of the weather gardens. helped COVID from all angles, to be yeah. honest. I've heard customers yeah. out there saying, Oh, I'm not sure I'll be able to look after them all when I get back to work. Mm. And a lot of them dreading going back to work and not being able to look after them. That's when plants. you sell the irrigation kits. <laughs> the irrigation kits. <laughs> they need to be on the front of the sale now. <laughs> Very uh, good. Cool, well, Arthur, thank you. that's been so good to speak to you, and mm. it's it's really I I love learning like the business side of things. You know how that's all run because yeah, that's not something I don't think we've covered on the podcast mm. so far. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting for our listeners as well to hear you know how it's run. You come into a beautiful garden centre and buy some plants, mm. you know. But it's been really interesting. So. Well, it has been a total success even for the wife and I. Um, Coming into a business with a turnover of 75,000, now it's 10 million. Mm. And um, as my, my family remind me, it's just, it's a massive monster. Yeah. That we have but it to seems like at. a happy monster. <laughs> but, it's a monster. Yeah. But I, I will say one thing, without, without the young family, mm. with the young initiatives, I'm mm -hmm. sure I would have retired years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it's them that keeps me young uh, and the young team we have here, wow. especially. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Thank, thank you, you for being on the podcast yeah, today. Thank you so much. Yeah, can we go to the Southern Nursery now? Is there a cafe there? <laughs> yes. Yeah, good. We're going to go. More food. Yes. We figured that we can all do with a really good laugh. So here's some gardening jokes to make you chuckle. Why is Hulk such a good gardener? 
Well, he's got green fingers, of course. <laughs> what did the father tomato say to the baby tomato when they were out on a family walk? He said, catch up. <laughs> did you know I own an innovative gardening supplies store? We sell cutting hedge technology. Why did the grape stop in the middle of the road? Well, it ran out of juice. <laughs> Welcome to the Plant Based Podcast News. This is a new feature where we look at new plants, new gardening tools. We also delve into news in the plant world and the gardening sphere. First up today, we've got a new book. This is called Regrown, and this is written by Paul Anderton and Robin Daly. You may recognise them on Instagram, though, under the name Two Dirty Boys. This book is all about growing fruit, vegetables and herbs from scraps. So it's set to be very interesting, and I hope they'll debunk some of those myths that you tend to see on Pinterest and YouTube that make it look super easy. So yeah, some great practical advice there. And the RHS have named Cotoniasta franchettii as a super plant. A one metre hedge of this Cotoniasta will absorb pollution from the equivalent of a car on a 500 mile journey. Absolutely incredible. Also in the trial was Hawthorn and Western Red Cedar, but the Cotoniasta was absorbing 20% more than them. Catch us next week with even more little news tidbits and such. Cobra is the very proud partner of Series 4 of the Plant Based Podcast. Joining in the celebration of plants, gardens and outdoor living. With over 60 models of lawnmowers available in the Cobra range, there's something for every garden. As a special offer for our listeners, Cobra is offering the chance to win exclusive prizes. Head over to cobragarden.co.uk to find out more. Here comes Alex. Hello. Hi. Oh. Ah, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I think this is possibly the most exciting gossip ever. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> we are so excited also. Oh. Oh. Oh, MP. <laughs> MP's done the usual Zoom thing where he hasn't put oh, audio hang on. on. Hang on, <laughs> sorry, you know, sorry. Like after a year of Zooming, you still have to tell people to turn the audio oh, on. Oh, sorry, I'm so basic. <laughs> oh, look who we have here. <laughs> I know, gardening myself, <laughs> Oh, she's so cute. Look at her. Let's just spend a minute. Let's put her up on big screen. <laughs> I'll put you up on the Apple TV, you know. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, cute. So, we basically invited Alex from Gardening Myself Sane onto the podcast Gossip because she's like one of our biggest supporters ever. <laughs> if we could have a super fan badge, we would give it to you. <laughs> That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Michael, can you make a pin badge for her, please? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm. Oh, yeah, another well, one of my great that. ideas. <laughs> funny you should say oh, that. Look. I am wearing oh, my go. collection of pin badges. Oh, my God. You're such a <laughs> disciple. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have my hoodie on, but it's in the wash. Oh. So. Can, I, can I ask, when, when did you first come across us or... Vice versa. Because I, I think you knew Ellen first, I, right? Is that it? Yeah, so I think yeah. I actually kind of came um, came across Ellen um, through Kim Grows. Um, oh, Kim. Actually, I think. Uh -huh. um, and then, the lovely yeah, Kim. And then obviously, oh, she's so lovely. And then, yeah, and then kind of 
obviously found the pair of you together mm-hmm. and then obviously met Ellen at Chatsworth and it was, yeah. And then the plant-based podcast came out and, well, the rest of my life is basically that. Oh, that's <laughs> Thank you. You I'm live not, for podcast I'm not a stalker, episodes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're... I've given I've given Alex my telephone number. I might regret it after this. <laughs> you get a happy brief. You're not as insane as I seem. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Can you? Do you want to tell us a bit about yourself then? What's your day job? Is it something you're allowed to talk what about my... or not? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely yeah? can. You're never sure. So my day. <laughs> so my day job now is probably a little bit hard to explain, but um, basically I work for a I work for Boots, um, and I was a store manager, farm well a pharmacist store manager, mm-hmm. uh, not pharmacist. I'm lying. Look, I'm so excited about being here. I'm making up jobs now. <laughs> no, I was a dispensing store manager for a number of years with Boots, uh-huh. um, and I about a year ago. 18 months probably now, I moved to head office and I still work in the pharmacy function. Mm-hmm. Um, so all to do with prescriptions and everything. But now I work at head office, mm-hmm. which is based not far from where I live. Are you uh, still able to go into work me. at the moment? Can you still go in? Yeah, so the office is still open uh, because obviously there's lots of stuff there that needs to still happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I personally work from home most of the time. Mm-hmm. Mm. But yeah, so that's that's my day job. Yeah. Um, so nothing really to do with plants at all. However, I have incorporated since I joined the team eighteen months ago. Everybody now has desk plants. Oh, that's cute! Yay. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and we even have on the end of our row of desks. We've become the little nursery for the office. So all the the people that kind of work around the office, if they come across any plants that look unloved, they all get moved and brought up to our desk area <laughs> so uh, we are the little house plant section <laughs> and you work that is awesome <laughs> and you work with my um five minute gardener is that right is, does I he work do. in your office well we don't work ah. yes yes so we don't work in the same team but we do both work yeah. at head office oh, um, cool. so uh so yeah so it's quite nice because he pops down and he's brought me little like he's brought me some brownies before i look, went up in <gasps> lockdown and looked after his house plants for him oh, on his cool. desk <laughs> um and we love it when we bump into each other in the office when we're both with people yeah. because then we just geek out over plants <laughs> and whoever we're with it's like mm-hmm, yeah <laughs> Right. Oh, that's cute. Uh, did, yeah, did, no, you, really did you know each other before Instagram? Do you know what I mean? Like, how did yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, that would be creepy so, otherwise, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I have a reputation to maintain. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, so, no, so I actually think I met Derek through um, Instagram, and then I think it was part of a one of the 30 day mm-hmm. challenges or whatever that I'd put on. My job was at Boots, and that's kind of how I was like, oh, I work for Boots. Oh, no way. Um, and then it was when I got my job at head office, so I was like, wow, might bump into you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and that's kind of... That's yeah, mad. now we see each other in the office sometimes. Right. It is such a small world, isn't it? Like, you know, you, yeah. you kind of go onto Instagram and see this massive big world of people, you know, all over the place. But actually, kind of, you know, that seven degrees of separation thing? Yeah. You're like, you know, you will, you'll be able to reach that person somehow. And I can remember um, when I first met Grow with Joe. Uh, he Grow is with totally Joe. ace. And <laughs> I don't Grow know why I find Joe. that a real tongue twister. <laughs> Grow with Joe. Joe. With grow. <laughs> and it, like watching his kids on the allotment and stuff is like the best thing. It uh-huh. literally makes me smile. It's so cute. And anyway, he's like, I said, Kirsty's coming to my allotment to help out. So, you know, come along. And he came along. He's like, yeah, that's really exciting. Aww. And we're chatting away. And it turns out he went to school with my husband. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure my husband dated Joe's sister. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for sure. <laughs> well, I think so. Like, where, like my husband's kind of like, well, yeah, I knew her. Oh, you know? I see. Kind of like, yeah, I knew her. So I don't need to know any more than that, really. But, you know, I just like, oh, my God, this is so weird. It's such a small world. <laughs> I mean, it's funny that you mention Kirsty um, because actually, so I, Kirsty was one of the first big, big, big Instagram accounts that I uh-huh. found, and I remember going. And at the time, I was the store manager in the town where, or the city, sorry, where um, where she kind of lives. <laughs> and I remember going into the people that, like, to my team, being like, "Guys, literally, if if." If she was to walk in, I no. think I would have a massive fangirl moment. Um, and then we kind of got chatting and realised we both kind of... I worked near where she was, 
um, and she came in one day to drop me off some seeds and honestly I was trying to serve a patient and I was just like oh my god that's Kirsty really oh my god that's Kirsty it is weird <gasps> when, when you see someone in real life that you've seen just on the screen before it's always like you're it's like you're seeing someone off TV or someone famous. It's really, yeah, Absolutely. it's so strange. <laughs> but where, where are you? I, I feel like that every time I see you, Michael. <laughs> oh, in real thank life. you, thank you. But you're. You, uh, that was that was. Do a you total live in joke. the same city? As, <laughs> do you live in the same city as Kirsty or not? Or what? I worked in that city, but ah, it's not far from it. Because you you've got so a similar accent to Kirsty. Am I right? Probably a little bit. Yeah, yeah. we don't live too far apart. Uh huh. Cool. Yeah. I love Kirsty's oh, accent. I know. I know. <laughs> It's the right it's sort great. of country accent. You know, it's not like country a Suffolk accent. accent, which I don't have, thankfully, but it's kind <laughs> of classy country. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Classy country, I like yeah. that very much. But Ellen, you don't <laughs> have like... an accent either, do you, really? No, no, I don't. I think I probably slip a little bit into it, especially when I'm with my parents oh, yeah. or with family. <laughs> but uh, generally, no, no one can tell where I'm from and I don't know why because I'm sure I would have had a Norfolk mm. accent growing up I guess I, I, I don't really know but <laughs> I can always remember that my mum worked on reception so she worked at a hotel on reception then she worked um, at an electrical shop and then she worked for Archant and so she was always customer facing and she, I can always remember her telling me to like pronounce my words do you know mm, what I mean yeah. like she she was always kind of well spoken she'd come home and it'd all drop and she'd yeah. be completely Norfolk uh-huh. but so I wonder if that's why I don't know but yeah I've not really got the Norfolk yeah. accent oh, just the odd cute. word here and there <laughs> oh I like trying to have a Norfolk accent oh, look in the, yeah. look in the background there's some of your artwork Alex look. there is there is oh. I have a, well this is my little wall that kind of sit behind oh, so cool. this is where so my art is I've got a lot of my little plants mm-hmm. behind me as well fantastic yep. There's ignore the the A3 or no A1 Gareth Gates poster. We oh, I, just... thought that, I thought it was an advent calendar. I don't know why. I thought it was Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But, <laughs> no, no. But tell me when? No, no. When did you start loving plants, though? Is it quite recent or? How did that No, all so I am not somebody that grew up loving plants. Uh-huh. Um, I actually kind of hated being outside as a kid uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I have a massive fear of spiders, which put me off mm-hmm. being outside anywhere near anything creepy. But you can get spiders years. inside, you know. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, I mean, I put, um, it's, um, it's a running joke in my family that... Um, it was as a kid when we used to go on holiday we'd go quite a lot to like kind of really nature-based places mm. and we'd drive through woods and i would just complain the whole time about you dragging me to tree land again oh no why am i going to look at one tree <laughs> oh, one tree looks like another tree um and it's so it's a massive joke in my family like yeah we're dragging you to tree land um so definitely not into plants yeah. but um a few years ago i got <laughs> got my first pets so I got two guinea pigs mm-hmm. completely got addicted to having guinea pigs ended up adopting eight within a year <laughs> and they actually eat a lot so um <laughs> we then started growing well I started growing some kind of herbs and lettuce and stuff for them um on my windowsill well that was I've got <laughs> you might be able to tell got quite an addictive personality so got really <laughs> into that really quickly <laughs> I love it. um and then, and then it was probably about six months after that um in the shop i was running at the time we had um an awful kind of incident in store which just sent my mental health absolutely Uh off the rails so um after not being on any medication for my mental health for a number of years it it kind of sent me uh, right Uh off the rail so um and that's when i really fell in love with gardening because i was signed off work and it was in that time that i just spent the whole time in the garden going to garden centers um <clears throat> and that's when I fell in love with plants because oh, it just cool. I remember <laughs> I sound like a proper psycho and I'm I, I'm really not, I promise. <laughs> oh, not um, I don't. remember no. I remember being sat in the garden after a really hard day at work and absolutely being um in crying so much just with anxiety and all mm-hmm. sorts of things and I was digging through my potato bag to dig up potatoes and I just remember this feeling of calm that just because yeah. I could feel the mud within my hands and it was just and again it was just one of the moments I just thought this is a feeling that I just I don't remember feeling at any other time and it was just a complete calm so yeah so within another couple of months I'd got a six foot raised bed in my back garden and I'd signed up to an allotment and mm-hmm. 
the rest is history. <laughs> really. I love that story. That's it's so, so nice. nice. <laughs> like just, and it's not nice how you <clears throat> felt, but how, like you discovered gardening, like amongst all of that kind of yeah, turmoil, and know. putting your hands in the soil, like coming into contact with all that good bacteria, just made you feel relaxed. And that's totally. proof mm-hmm. enough, isn't it, that it's it's all true? So absolutely, that's I love having yeah. my hands in the soil, and it's even better if there's potatoes down there. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, Eve once had all the potatoes out. I was like, I'm not done with this yet. I'm just going to keep. I don't feel I don't feel like I've grounded myself quite enough yet, so I'm just going to keep digging. Yeah. <laughs> keep grounding. I have never seen your hands dirty, Michael. Actually, what? Ah, uh, I did something on the allotment at your place one day, didn't I? One day. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've been gardening today. I planted a load of primroses. I was, okay. I was well up for it. Yeah. Your nails are cleaner and nicer than mine. Oh, <laughs> did you did you get your hands dirty when you're planting your millions of bulbs? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. But I'm just when I garden, I'm a bit of an animal. I tend to just want it. <laughs> I tend to just use my hands and everything. But that's kind of hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I recommend. Gloves. I know. Like I recommend all these things like tools and stuff to people, but it's like really. This is my tool. <laughs> yeah, your hand. Yeah. So I've just been on the on my balcony yeah. potting up some plants and bits and pieces, and I used a spoon. <laughs> I, I literally used a spoon because I don't it's have any garden to tools here. Oh, I don't need them, and so I used a spoon. So, Honestly, yeah. some of the best the best things I use for gardening are not gardening related at all. So <laughs> you might have seen. So I've obviously got a polytunnel <clears throat> on my allotment, and my I, I took some photos with it last year. Um, this is my best gardening hack I have, and it's completely ungardening related. Mm-hmm. I don't bother with kneeling pads anymore because I just used a yoga mat that I had at home that I never oh, used. Cool. So it lives in my polytunnel, but it's brilliant because it's so big. Mm. You don't have to get yeah. up every like thirty seconds to move that's the perfect. the yeah. thing. So that perfect. that's a lot better than any kneeler you could get. <laughs> and yeah, has, I mean, why I has no have... one thought of that? Why has no one thought of that? It's that's a really honestly, good idea. Yeah, kneeler roll. Yeah. 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 Kneeler roll. Yeah. yeah. Um, and equally, I've got loads of dibbers and all sorts, but I tend to just use a chopstick or my finger. <laughs> yeah. Any which way, that. really. Any which <laughs> way. That's cool. Whatever. Yeah. How many houses? So do you have. Oh, oh, sorry, Ellen. You go. You go. No, you first. Have you. Thank you so much. <laughs> have you got any plans for your allotment and garden this year? Is there anything specific that you want to do? Uh, yes, so this is probably the first year. My, so I've had my lot. This will be my third, or f- I think it's my fourth year actually of having my allotment. And it's only probably this year that we've actually worked through everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I did obviously in my first six months tell everybody, "Don't worry, I'll don't worry about that. The knee high weeds, I'll get rid of all of them in six months. <laughs> the whole thing will be. I'll be growing a million things by the summer. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, that didn't happen, even slightly, obviously." Um, but we've just got a new, my mum's old shed has come to us, so we need to put that up. And um, obviously inspired by um, Richard at Sharp in Your Spades, mm-hmm. we're gonna go for some raised beds in the polytunnel. So that's my hubby's job because he quite happily comes to the allotment as long as he has a digging job or a building job. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine's the same, <laughs> but trying to get him involved in any form of gardening other than that, no. it's not, he's not interested. No. So that's, But that's fine, that's useful, because they're the jobs I don't really know or Agreed. want to do yeah, anyway. Totally. <laughs> totally, so yeah, so I'm just so like... So raised just... beds in the polytunnel. Yes, because I, we had, um, I had my tomatoes in there last year and I planted them all wonky and the thing was like a jungle and you couldn't get in there. So I'm thinking if I've got some beds, I might have some order to it. <laughs> that's the plan. That's very oh, that's good. Cool. Look forward to seeing it. And what about in your house? How many house plants have you got? I mean, my house plants are something we probably shouldn't oh, talk about. I haven't um, done a count for a while, actually. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I've not counted them. Um, mainly because I'm probably not the best at looking after them. Oh, same. So I definitely <laughs> I use house plants. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely Michael, use... you were listed in the top... Houseplant expert. I keep telling the other people day. I'm not a houseplant expert, though. It's mad. I mean, I message you for advice. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find somebody new, clearly. But no, the thing is, I've never said I'm a houseplant um, expert, but everybody assumes it because houseplants are the one thing that, like, the masses grab onto at the moment. So they're kind of like, oh, look, he likes gardens. He must be, you know, knowledgeable about houseplants. He must know everything. But, nah, not at all. We've just got so much faith in your just mind. Buy a new, so I, much I faith. just tell people to buy a new one when it dies. <laughs> off from me. 
Oh, but sorry, go on. <laughs> well, no, no. So I definitely use pl- house plants, probably like most people, as a way to get through the winter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I buy loads through the winter, um, think I can save them all. And then what happens is the summer comes and I get so excited about being outside, I tend to kind of forget about all of oh. them. And then I'm surprised in the winter again when they've not all survived. Um but no, I do have quite a few, but um, my favourite are Clethias, so I've just bought a trio of them from Pretty Cactus, actually. Oh, awesome. oh they're so beautiful. Awesome. And I've got a jewel orchid, which is my second, because Ooh. I killed the first one. Yeah. Um, but it, it lives on my desk where I work, so I get to look at it all day, every day, and as soon as it looks a little bit droopy, that's it. I get the little squirter out, get the humidifier on. <laughs> yeah, it gets that's a lot of love. Cool. Oh, my God. I've they got are a good awesome. feeling about this one. It's going gonna, it's gonna to survive. <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, oh. fingers crossed. But yeah, I, th- I try and water my house plants once a week. So if anything needs it in between, then I tend to miss it and it dies. <laughs> so yeah, especially yeah. Actually, once summer, a week is quite is a lot, isn't it? Once yeah. a week is mm. quite a lot to water them. Like mine don't get wa- mine get watered. Well, I look every at two them weeks. Those that need to be a, a bit week. moist, maybe ten days. Yeah. But in the summer, perhaps once a week. It just depends on what they are. But like once a week, I don't ever water mine once a like, week. I don't. I don't water everything once a week. But I look at it once a week and then water it if right. it needs it. So yeah. I mean, I do find that my my look with house plants is very mixed. So for instance, I have definitely killed a number of spider plants Mm -hmm. which should be dead easy to keep i don't i couldn't (laughs) even tell you however my poinsettia is still going yes that's That's Uh fabulous and the only reason i bought it was because i listened to you guys to give me all the tips and i was like you know what i'm gonna buy one Love it. Um, <laughs> and it's still good. We're influencers, Michael. We're in actual real life influencers. 100%. 100%. Oh. <laughs> but do you know what? I was thinking about houseplants today, and like over the last week, there's been like a couple of TV programs with like features about houseplants, and they've been so dull because they keep recommended the same ones all the time. Like mm, you don't see anything yeah. like a jewel orchid or some really cool calatheas. It's just the same old stuff. So. I, oh, it just drives me crazy because why don't we grow more flowering house plants or you know all the uh, calanchoe? I think it's and the double sometimes ones. Sometimes it does come down. Oh. Sometimes it does come down to knowledge. Sometimes it comes down to what people can grab hold of at the time that they're going on the show. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah, often exactly. they take the samples yeah. in. But um, someone asked me the other day online, you know what gardening show do I like mm. and I was like none because they all make me want to yeah. throw my TV out the window because yeah. just I don't feel inspired I just don't like you know I just like see another monster and monsters are amazing I absolutely mm. love them but what about all the other millions of plants I know <laughs> I always <laughs> want to know what is no next what's the, the next monster you know there's so many cool yeah. things to choose from it's just oh. mm-hmm. so yeah so I was just a bit like uh, when I saw those today <laughs> We want jewel orchids oh. on TV. You can make oh, it happen, oh, Michael. Oh, defo. But the thing is, I feel like we're at peak houseplant now, so I think most people would now recognise a monstera. So I think that's why we need to go further. That's, yeah, that's we need feeling. to move it on. It is one of my proudest moments, I must say, mm-hmm. that um, one of my best friends came to Gardener's World Live with us, uh, obviously not last year, year before, and the whole way walking around, I was just being the really annoying person going, well, this is this, and this oh, is this, cute. and this is this. And now she does it, and it's brilliant. We were in a quiz the other day, and my question was um, about mistletoe. So what? what is it? Is mm-hmm. it a plant, a hanging plant, oh. or a parasite? She's like, I know this. I know this because I've listened. <laughs> and just hearing people that had no interest in plants be interested in plants. Oh. It's the best it's so feeling, ex- isn't it? It really is. <laughs> One of my um, best friends, Louise, since lockdown. Louise, you'll be listening, I know. I'm so proud of her. I thought I just waved at her. I just waved at her. Yeah, hi, Louise. We're all waving at you on Zoom. (laughs) 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 She's she's never really been interested uh, in plants. She's had a couple in the house, spider plants mainly. And then when I went away last year, I gave her some to look after. And that started her addiction a little bit. Every day i am not joking you she messages me photographs of new plants and she is she is out she is out of control 
honestly what pots can i get what is this plant oh look what i've just ordered she's again she's done pretty <laughs> cactus as well alex same thing got an order in but what pot can i put it in how am i going to miss it what do i do what compost and I, she's like i can't wait for you to come back to england because you can come around and tell me what to do with all my house plants and i'm like wowzer <laughs> That's we you have create monsters. We have created a plant monster. <laughs> oh, that is cool. Another one. <laughs> oh, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? Not a very. It's only Coke. It's not very. It's exciting. Coke in a wine glass. We got a classy one here, it Ellen. Is. <laughs> oh. Do you know if I'd have been organised enough, I should have. I should have brought my three spirits up. Something else oh. I bought because of you guys. Oh, definitely. Oh my God. I I love that. Ellen, I was Me really too. surprised that your favourite is social el elixir. Is that right? No, it's a livener. I like the livener. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah. The social elixir. Oh, no. Is I like the green bitter. bottle. The what? Oh, yeah. I that's like the, the social elixir. Yeah, yeah, the social elixir. Yeah, that's my favourite oh. one. I'll tell you why. Because the livener has quite a lot of caffeine in it. Yeah. And caffeine makes me mental. Uh, like, I only need it. a little. And oh. I am buzzing and my heart is racing. And so oh. I can't have too much of that. <laughs> I'm so only generally the, I'm only little. I can't handle anything that makes me buzz too much. And so I... Uh, yeah, so the social elixir is the one for me. I actually had one last night. It was so uh -huh. good. <laughs> what's, what's the other one? Search the elixir, livener. And livener and the oh, night, night nightcap. nightcap yeah nightcap should That's calm good. you down darling no it, yeah not when i <laughs> no nothing calms me down when i've had coffee oh, it bloom, could take days <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey um so, yeah. alex can i call you alex band <laughs> yeah yeah as in alice Why? band Sorry, that, oh, that, yes. that, was fu that was funnier in my head, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't quite hit the spot today. I thought what might be a really cool thing to do is, is there anything you want to ask us? Oh, my God, now you put oh. me on the spot, man. <laughs> it can be anything, you right? Can interview us, oh. because we're asking you so many things. Yeah. I'm not prepared for this. I even asked Ellen if I needed to prepare anything. I'd just like to say, Michael Michael often throws these things in and this wasn't, we didn't discuss this and I'm that's cool. Creative. We like organic things. He's a, he's the creative it's fine. one. It's so. fine. Okay. Um, so probably for both of you then, come up, what's your, what has been your favourite moment of all of the plant-based podcast stuff? Oh, ooh. Ellen? Oh, um... <laughs> She hasn't got one, has she? Because you've met some incredible people. Like, there's been so much awesome stuff. I know, it's really hard because, you know, you can, like, meeting Chris Packham and Liz Earl, they have to be highlights. Mm, but yeah. I really love going behind the scenes at suppliers because Michael sees all of that side of things and I don't. So mm. when we went to, like, Double, Double H um, Orchid Supplier and you walk in and there's just thousands of orchids. Do you know what I mean? Like, I love that and... So when I see behind the scenes of stuff, that's all completely new to me. Mm -hmm. So I think I really kind of enjoy that side of things because I don't see it generally. At all. Look at Michael smiling at me. Like, um, he's like, I'm just yeah, nodding along like a proud cute. parent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would say obviously the same things, but also I've really enjoyed when we've done all the TV versions, you know, the things we've done on YouTube. Like the allotment games, you know, it, you oh, hit, yeah. hitting your head in the shed like 20 million times. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> but also what I'm loving is how we how we've made this series more like magazine style show as well. I'm feeling really kind of proud about Pumped. that. Yeah, it's really cool. It's, look, it's good. It's different. So and I think it's you know, the only one. Like different features. It's the only one that's like that really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Would you say? Yeah, I don't yeah. think any other podcast that I've listened to has the kind of yeah, that, so that kind of style. Cool. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So we're kind, we are definitely, we are totally pumped for series four. <laughs> that is for sure. And also, keeping our fingers crossed that in a couple of months we might actually be able to meet people for real oh. and record again yeah. rather than on Zoom. Yeah. That's awesome. No, that'd be amazing. Mm. <laughs> it would be amazing. Um, and I, I just have to remember really how to dress. <laughs> <laughs> and not to pull faces because when I'm in public I'm obviously always wearing a mask and the amount of times I'm just walking around like probably pulling really weird faces because <laughs> yeah. people can't see it and then when the mask's yeah. off oh uh, true yeah 
I have a confession cream. about that. Yeah. I don't know if I should really say this on the podcast or not, but I have potty mouth sometimes, especially when I'm agitated or frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I often find that happens where I am living at the moment. Mm -hmm. And with a mask on, you seem to think that no one can hear Ah, you say the F word a lot. And so that has definitely happened out loud. And I've gone, oh, yeah, I just actually said that really loud. (laughs) Mm Oh, You're not alone, yeah. Ellen. And that's mm. one of my big concerns. Go <laughs> <laughs> it's like zipping your mouth, learning to dress. How do you put makeup on? I don't know. Like literally, oh, I, le- yeah. I the amount of times I've gone out minus a bra. I mean, I just <laughs> really, I genuinely need to remember how to live life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, preach it to anyway. the choir. <laughs> Probably because you got your bras planted up. Oh, yeah, because Alex, you planted Hang on. up uh, this is, a face mask. This is just for you. What's that? This is my oh, bra. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You pulled your bra up onto Zoom. It's here and not on me. Ellen, you're out of control, honestly. You are just... You're, you're a wrong... Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, I, I've, put, I've even put... I don't know why, because obviously it's a podcast, you can't see me. I've, I've put a bra on for the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Only a bra? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we wondered why we couldn't see anything else oh. only your shoulders. Oh, dear. Anyway, there we go. I like your it has animal been. Head I am dressed as well. I'm pleased to hear it. Um, it's been so lovely chatting with you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, it's been honestly. I've been absolutely buzzing since you asked. I, um, I mean, I am overwhelmed by the fact that you wanted to talk to me. So, oh, awesome. thank you. That's cool. Alex, thank you so much for always supporting us yeah. as you do, of and we we love it when you post things on socials where you're listening to and laughing or commenting on a guest or something that's been said it's brilliant it's so comical i feel like it's i feel like it's part of the podcast now you know it's kind of like she's muscled her way in hasn't she Uh, (laughs) do you know what mission accomplished (laughs) oh dear but you just it, like you're so consistent like you just <laughs> no, but I love that because like you know a lot of people they, they're all there and then they suddenly get bored of it and they just drop something but you're really yeah really reliable and consistent and that's great oh yeah. thank you there you go yeah. much love for you Alex oh, thank you so thank much you very stay much. very you. safe hopefully oh, we'll you see too. you in person at some point yeah, soon yeah that would be awesome definitely that would be awesome <laughs> thanks oh. for having me see you later darling bye bye, bye. 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 The theme music for the Plant Based Podcast is an excerpt from the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editing is done by Gareth Patch of Semi Echo.